Well, good day. Welcome to Endurance Room. My name's Jess, and today we're talking about beginning bushcraft. We're going to discuss some of the tools that you need to get started, some of the skills to work on with those tools, and then perhaps your mindset for going out and doing your first overnights in the woods. This video is a direct response to a comment I got from a subscriber who lives over in the UK. And he's just getting out into the woods and wants to be working on his skills. He was curious if I had any recommendations for gear, things to work on. And he wanted to know what my frame of mind was like when I was going out and doing my first overnighters, what my motivation was. Because that's a big deal. If you've never done this stuff before, it could really, you know, be a hurdle. So, awesome question. I think your name's Misha. Rock on, dude. I'm really happy to hear that you're getting out in the woods. So first up, let's talk a bit about gear. Anybody that's thinking about getting into bushcraft, you can tell if you've seen YouTube videos or Instagram pics, there's a huge focus on tools for the woods, different gear, stuff. You can simplify that whole process and know what skills to be focusing on if you just concentrate on something called the five C's of survivability. This was a system that was named by Dave Canterbury, but it's been used literally across time from Paleolithic hunters to the present day age. These are the basic tools for wilderness survival, things that are gonna let you cut and craft, to make fire, to keep yourself warm, to carry, purify water, and to build things, to bind things, cordage. And in a nutshell, that's what you want to be focusing on from beginner even to advanced. In theory, the more advanced you get, the less you need to carry. So with that being said, what kind of stuff do you need to get started? So what you see before you is an example of a kit that I was carrying at the beginning of my bushcraft journey. And I think it's a good example of you know, a basic bushcraft kit. It's a 10C kit that's predominantly built around the five C's. For a fixed blade knife, I've got a Mora HD. It's got a carbon steel blade. I took a grinder to the back of it and gave it a 90 degree spine. This lets me strike my ferro rod as well as process wood with the back of the edge. It was about 30 bucks. I've got a Swiss Army knife for a pocket knife. I've had this since I was a kid and it's great. This is my EDC knife to this day. This is a little Lansky sharpener. It's got a coarse, a fine, a ceramic edge, as well as a diamond hone. And this is a great little tool for keeping a serviceable edge on your blades out in the woods. Here we have a little folding saw, no name. I got it on eBay probably five years ago. The tip's broken, but it works just fine. A half inch ferro rod that's about six inches in length. This thing has made a lot of fires and it's still going strong. Right next to it, we've got a good old Bic lighter. So we've got spark, we've got flame. I keep an extra one in my backpack as well as in my pocket. I'm always with a lighter. I also carry a Surefire, which we have in one of our three containers. For Surefire, today I've just got some homemade. Some cotton balls have been dipped in Vaseline as well as some wax jute twine. This lets me build a fire no matter what the conditions are. Steel water bottle. This lets you carry water. It lets you cook food, purify water bought at a thrift store for like two bucks used and it works just fine right next to it i've got a little haversack this is a polish shoulder bag i got it on ebay for about 10 bucks works great it's really light it's compact it lets you carry everything you see here except for the blanket i still use it to this day i use it to carry food i use it for basic minimum kits I use it as an extra bag so I can take my backpack out to the woods, set up camp, and then I use my haversack out around camp with me so I don't have to carry the heavy backpack. A paracord ridge line with a couple prussic loops on it. This lets you build shelters. I've also got an additional hank of paracord. You want to be able to tie a few different knots that are going to let you do the tasks that you need to do. Setting up shelters, 
you know, tying your backpack up off the ground, tying gear to your backpack. Our main cover today is this Miltec poncho. This lets you have an outer layer for rain protection, as well as set up shelters. You can make a bivy sack out of it, a ground sheet. You can stuff it and make a browse bed. On the bottom here, I've got a military wool blanket. And if we wanna focus on our basics, we should look at the things that as minimal and basic as can be. And as far as sleeping kit goes, that's a wool blanket. And understanding how to use this and stay warm with just a wool blanket will teach you a lot about the woods. So everything you see right here is an example of the five C's. We've got our cutting tools, our containers, cordage, combustion, and our cover elements. It's the five C's. That's what you wanna be focusing on. As I mentioned, I've got a couple extra things with me, and this basically rounds out a 10 C kit. So I've got a candling device with my headlamp, it lets me see at night. I've got a compass for land navigation, cargo tape for gear repair, for first aid, fire starting. The uses for this are pretty endless. Cotton cloth. I can use this for hygiene, for first aid, for pre-filtering my water, for making charred material. On the back of my knife, I've got a little extra paracord wrapped around some cargo tape, securing a cotton sail needle for gear repair, for first aid. So there you have what I would consider to be a really good example of a basic bushcraft kit. They would let anybody go out into the woods and start working on their skills without breaking the bank. All that stuff I found on eBay, you know, thrift shops, surplus stores, and it didn't cost a fortune and it still works for me today. It's stuff that I still use. As far as skills go, work on your cutting tools, learn how to handle them safely, how to maintain your edges, how to keep your blades from rusting. You want to work on your firecraft, how to build your fires, and that goes hand in hand with your cutting tools because that's going to let you process the wood, creating materials to build your fires. You need to understand the trees in your area, which ones are going to be good for getting fire started, which ones are going to be good for burning for longer periods of time. Those are going to be your harder woods. You want to understand the plants in your area for making birds nests. You know, what kind of barks you have to work with. So there's a lot of different skills and a lot of different areas that kind of cross over. But work on those cutting tools. Work on your fire, your fire safety with containers. You want to be able to process water, cook food, make char cloth. Those are all good skills to have. With your cover elements, your shelter building. That's a huge one. Each time I went out in the woods when I was getting started, I would set up my tarp, I would set up a shelter, I would build a fire, I'd boil some water. Pretty much every time I went out in the woods, those were the things that I was working on. I was using my knives and processing wood, making material for my fires, and learning the land. So let's talk a bit about motivation, going out and spending your first night in the woods. You know, you got to find whatever it is for yourself. You got to want to be outside. And, you know, for me, I've always been in love with nature. I feel good out in the woods, in the trees. Nature is real. It's the place to be. As far as me going out and doing my first overnights, I kind of got into it by accident. I grew up on a farm and I had... I had a lot of time in the woods growing up, but I didn't do much camping other than sitting a tent up in the backyard. Like I didn't spend any nights in the woods other than a, a quick camping trip with my uncle in Idaho when I was 15. It was an awesome time. We went up into the mountains on horseback. He had a cabin tent and we saw elk, these, you know, mountain, mountain rams and we did some trout fishing. It was great, but as far as me personally doing overnights, I didn't get into it until just recently, a couple years ago. And I got into that because I had made a friend out in Hawaii and I was talking to him about setting up an old time strongman workshop. I was doing all this training, bending steel bars, nails, bolts, 
um, horseshoes, tearing decks of cards, levering sledgehammers, all old school stuff, really cool training. But I was talking to this guy about going out and setting up this workshop and he was gonna help me and bring me out, but I needed to find a place to stay. And I told myself I was gonna camp. So I started researching camping in the woods and found Dave Canterbury's channel. I learned about the five C's, the 10 C's. I found Corporal's Corner, Greybeard of Green Beret. And I just started soaking up all the knowledge. When I came back from Hawaii, I started working on lightening the load and just working on the bare elements, the basics of survival, just like we're talking about today and just working on my skills. You know, I, I did a few overnights and then I found this TV show called Alone. And I saw the first, the first couple episodes of the first season and I always like, I have to do this. <laughs> yeah. So a couple months went by. I had been starting, I had been working on the channel. I put out a few overnights and I saw that they were casting for their seventh season, I believe it was. And I sent in an application and I got called back and interviewed and they started having me send in video footage. I gave them hours and hours of video um, of me doing stuff out in the woods, of the videos that I was producing for the channel. And I didn't make the cut, but it really lit a fire under my butt. It got me to go out to the Pathfinder school and take their intermediate class. And then I bounced right back two weeks later for the advanced class. And I've just been working on this stuff ever since. I absolutely love it. I'm always looking to learn more and improve my skills. And I'm doing this channel because I want to inspire other people to get out there and have the same experiences, build their skill sets, and connect with nature. Because nature's real. It's a beautiful thing. It's where it's at. So I hope this helps. If you got any questions, just leave them down below. And I hope to see you in the woods. You guys have a great day. Cheers.